actually get injured the first day. Yeah. <laughs> How you been? Been excellent. What about you? You've been good, Jeff? So far, so so. All right. Uh, because I can, <laughs> because I had the, the option to choose, because I still love what I do, I think that's goes, that goes without saying. And uh, because, as I said the last day, I had two wonderful options. One option is going to still be there the following year, or two years ahead, or three or four. Uh, this one, is, it was either yes or that's it. Would have been a, it could have been okay anyways, but uh, I thought that I still had st you know, uh, the appreciation for the game. I still enjoy being here every day. Uh, I'm in an incredible uh, organization and a place where I feel respected and listened to and you know, appreciated. And I appreciate it too. So it was after uh, the weeks I needed to to make up my mind. It was a, a decision that I I made comfortably. Was it a decision you went back and forth on in your mind, or were you pretty? Okay? No, I, I went this time back and forth. Um, talked to my wife, uh, talked to Pop, talked to friends, um, and I, I it, it was a close call. Um, but again, considering what I said that day, that I'm a very lucky person and I had two wonderful options and sometimes I'm curious to explore the other option more often than this one. So that, that's what kept me in doubt for, for a, a few weeks. Uh, but I guess I'll, I'll postpone it uh, till when I decide to do it. How close did you come to Lady John coming back? Say again? Pretty close. I, I said it was a close call. So um, once it was about time to decide because the, the team was you know, taking shape, um, I sat with my wife for the last time and we talked and, and yeah, I, it was, uh, why not? I mean, uh, I can't. I have the opportunity. They, they expressed that they needed me again, that they feel like I, I still help and I still enjoy what I do. It's not that I, it's, a, it's a pain to come here every day or I'm struggling with injuries or I, the last two years have been great for me. Uh, maybe the healthiest they've been since you know my Spurs career started, so why not? Do you think the decision will ever get easier? Do you think every off season just... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, uh, it's true. It's probably it's not going to get easier. Or maybe, yeah, if something happens that will, you know, will make up my mind. I said, yeah, it's, it's time to call it. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, I, I, I can't do it anymore. They don't need me anymore. Um, and I definitely want to explore uh, other options. So I, I guess that one day is going to be a no-brainer. <laughs> so far it hasn't been. So. I'll, we'll see. Every every summer we shuffle a uh, deal again and see what cards I have. When you talked to Pop, he said he obviously said he needed to be one to come back. What was that conversation like? Basically, short. <laughs> uh, he said that he wanted me back, that he needed me, that I could still uh, help the team win, and you know a few things more. But basically, uh, that was it. Um, he didn't uh, ask me for a response right away. He just expressed his opinion, and then I, I had to deal with it and, and decide w w with that information in hand what I was going to do. I know you'll know more about it as a, as a camp unfolds here and stuff. But going into the training camp, what do you think of the talent that's been assembled on you know, this team going, going into training camp? I'm going to say that I'm very excited. But I've been excited every single year since I've been here because every year we figured out to add talent or to keep an unbelievable group. Uh, and you know, last year we had a, a great season. We won 61 games. We played the conference finals, and we added still more more players and younger players and depth. Um, and I've been here for a month, you know, playing open gym, working out, and I and I see how much these kids work out and how they improved 
they are and how hungry they are. So it's, it's exciting to, to witness that and to be sharing team with, that, with them and, and, you know, try to be working hard to try to be the last team standing. I guess it's the worst you think it's ever been. I mean, this happened in Carmelo. It's, it's fun. I mean, it's great that it happens. It keep you, keeps you um, focused every night because of the amount of talent it's around. Uh, we have, you know, Chris Paul coming to the Rockets and now Carmelo and, you know, it's always uh, very interesting. And, you know, you still have the Warriors that are the defending champs and, and the best team around. Um, so it's going to keep it exciting. So, um, yeah, I'm thrilled for this season. I guess we're going to get to talk to Tony here in a minute. Um, and it sounds like he's maybe ahead of schedule in his rehab. What does that mean for you guys to hear that he you might see him sooner than maybe? As unbelievable news, regardless of uh, the selfish thought of, you know, it's going to help the team. It's just great to see him in an optimistic. It's great to see him working out. Um, it, it was kind of devastating the first couple of weeks. Uh, talking to him and, and seeing the, the scar and, and trying and listen to the, the possible outcomes, it, it was hard. Uh, and now that you see him so enthusiastic and happy to be rehabbing and, and seeing the, you know, the light at the end of the tunnel and, and knowing that he's going to be back and uh, he's doing well ahead of schedule is, is, is great. If he can help us soon, great. If he can help us later, it's not the main thing. Now it's, it's great to see him in a good mood and his career uh, still uh, bright. Colin, how much do you see leadership as being one of your top priorities for this season? Uh, it is a priority. I, I guess one of the reasons that why they keep me around is because I help in other aspects. <laughs> I think that my numbers have not been the best in my career. Uh, other players, I guess, can contribute the same way I do on the court. I, I think I can provide also some more value uh, with the corporate knowledge that I and you know Tony and me possess. So that that helps around too in the locker room, on the court, on timeouts, half times, stuff like that. So um, I think I can help in that aspect. I don't consider myself the leader of the team or at all. We just all want to help. But the fact that I've been here. 15 seasons, 2016, you know, we, we can help in different ways. We, we know what's going on and we see things coming a little before the rest because we, you know, um, we got this, you know, knowledge of Bob, the team, uh, teammates, office or whatever. Speaking of that leadership role, I mean, I guess LA had his name come up in some trade rumors this offseason. Do you guys feel like you have to talk to him about that or? or, or? Have any conversations with him about? No, not really. Um, to, to tell you the truth, I've been pretty <laughs> <laughs> outside uh, the rumors, so I really don't know what happened. I was having a wonderful vacations <laughs> in, in Spain, enjoying my family and and you know doing other things. So I really don't know how close or not it was. I just know that he's here, that he's happy to be here, that he's ready to go and he's going to push as hard as he's been pushing in the last years to, to help us win. Um, so hopefully he stays here all, all season. It seems like that Jante's put in a lot of work in the summer. Can you talk about his progress and kind of what you see from him? Well, th yes, he, he's been working out a lot and he hasn't basically taken time off. But he's had some, you know, Sometimes physical problems. He missed a couple of weeks here in open gym. So, but he's been working hard at the gym, uh, getting his shot off, uh, and working on his technique. Um, so, uh, very optimistic about his future. I mean, you, 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 it's hard to tell if he's going to be. Right now, he's going to be a great player and he's a potential all star. You don't know if it's going to happen now or in five years. Uh, it's just. Depends, depends a lot on him, but he, he's a very talented kid. Uh, he's been uh, limited for on-court activity. Uh, you know, he's coming from a serious injury, um, but he, as far as I heard, he's ready to go 
now when we start training camp. So we see him in and out, uh, being cautious because we, we wanted him when, when the season starts. Um, so we haven't seen much, but he's been around. Well, I, I think Bob was the first one to do it right. and to do it consistently. Uh, at the beginning was big news every time he sat somebody. And then it started to be more normal and then other teams started to do it. And, and then it became like a, you know, a, a no-brainer to do it in certain situations. So I think it's, it was a great decision by the league to cut the preseason short and, and spread the games more. I think it's, it's very smart. You want to keep the best players um, on the court as much as you can and spreading games and doing what Pop has been doing, limiting minutes of some players, is, is a smart idea. So um, the league saw that and as they often do, they are very proactive and, and they changed some things to, to keep players on the court. This is a strange time in, in professional sports where politics has become more pronounced. As a professional athlete and as uh, someone who's come from another country, how are you watching what's going on right now with the intersection of professional sports and politics? I, I think it's great what's happening. Um, many times we athletes have a, look at this, a camera in front of us. And in many cases, a lot of people that are in this, uh, with the same have same background history uh, or growing up together don't have that opportunity so the athletes that do have this opportunity and want to send a message is a great uh, environment to do to do it uh, so I think it's it's great what has been going on in the NFL um, what I always heard about this country is that it's a free country and you have the freedom to uh, of speech to say whatever you want the way you want and uh, peacefully, and that's what they've been doing. So I'm, I'm all for it, uh, and I think it's, uh, it helps to understand some deeper issues that are being, have been going on in this country for a long time. So uh, I think they've been very courageous, and it's something that uh, got to be done. If you have the, this media opportunity to say it, it's very welcome. Could you imagine someone dealing for a national anthem in Argentina? Oh yeah, we've been we've, we've done a lot of things, and we when we feel like there's a, some injustice, people go outside on the on the streets. Uh, but not every person have the opportunity to kneel in front of millions of people watching. Uh, so are the the athletes are the ones that have these uh, all these microphones open. Uh, what regular people do is just go with. Uh, uh, to the square, to the streets, and complain. Here we have a more, way more effective uh, outlet. So it is, it's a great opportunity, as I said, to, to express feelings, uh, and it's very well done. Thank you. Thank you. All right.